Hello and welcome back and today I want to look at the four popular measurements of NAS performance, namely data transfer, bandwidth, latency and of course IOPS. So let's get started. Whenever you see anything to do with data storage, be it hard drives, NASDAQs, whatever, you always see these same four terms getting thrown around as means with which their performance is measured, and therefore the four ways in which you should decide to buy a device. Yeah, sure, CPU, memory, ports, that sort of thing are all important, and they really, really are. But ultimately, the internals of a NAS, because it's a closed system, these performance uh, values, they have to be judged in this way, and therefore having four distinct ways to value a NAS or indeed any storage system are very important indeed. And today I want to talk about all four and what exactly are they, giving you a nice easy simile and why they are important. The first one is probably the most obvious of all, data transfer. Namely, how long does it take for data to be transferred? And you know, most of the time when you think data transfer, you think of that little bar that pops up that slowly fills up with green that just tells you how long it's taking for data to be copied, pasted, cut, whatever, into the destination. Otherwise, it refers to the amount of traffic generated and transported from one location to another. A simple simile being, on a motorway, for example, what um, the, um, the data transfer is the sheer number of cars that you have sent from one end of the motorway to the other. That is the data transfer, the weight, and therefore the speed of the, which those cards have covered as well, which leads us neatly into bandwidth. Now, bandwidth is a term that's used to describe internet, uh, the internet network speeds. It's something that's used to basically describe weight in many ways. Um, it's the ability to give, uh, to provide a certain level of throughput, that pass through, think of a pipe. AKA okay, bandwidth is also defined as the amount that is transmitted over a given time. Um, think of the, um, the width of a motorway as the bandwidth. The bigger the bandwidth, keyword there, the more that can be passed through it. So that's where you get terms like high bandwidth, when you want much more bandwidth to cover more traffic. Traffic, road, beautiful stuff. Next, latency. Now with latency, this is effectively what we can think of as true speed. It's the, uh, eff the effective measurement of here to here. It is the delivery of an instruction, not the actioning or completion of an instruction, the delivery of an instruction right up until the point when an instruction is begun. Uh, from the distance of you clicking, execute, and the, ex the beginning and the execution of that action. That is the latency, and you want as low a latency number as possible. You know, this, this isn't one of those things where the bigger the number, the better, you want low. And if you need a comparison, you gamers, Remember when you used to game on the PC or a mix server and you saw the ping and you always wanted the ping to be as low as possible, therefore the, you know, the speed at which things are being sent back and forth, think of latency as exactly the same principle. And again, latency in terms of our motorway analogy, think of it as the time between the light turning green and the first car starting its engine and therefore every car afterwards. That is the latency. You want a shorter latency, a smaller latency number, as possible, and normally latency is measured over tenths, milli, hundredths of a second. Um, and which brings us to our last one, IOPS, or in other words, input output per second. And this is effectively all of your read writes and all of your instructions, how many can be performed per second. Now, there was a time when IOPS, it was, it's not that it wasn't counted too much, but older media had very low IOPS and therefore, it wasn't really seen as the benchmark you were looking for because, you know, you know, as much as 12, 15 years ago, IOPS were so low that they weren't really a unit of measurement. Anyone that owned an old PC that was trying to copy and paste multiple files inside the hard drive's volume, so you wanted to copy a bunch of files from music to desktop and at the same time, a bunch of files from photos to download and some TV shows from video into box sets. You did that all at once and the hard drive couldn't handle it and if anything it didn't just do them one by one it tried to do them all at once and done a terrible job indeed all transmission was affected and of course these days because of data transmission on solid state drives being more synchronicity and more operations being done at the same time ergo 
IOPS are higher too. In terms of our motorway number analogy, think of IOPS as the number of cars that are able to pass through a given point, just a given point here in one second. The more cars that can go through that given point, not the width, the given point, that is your IOPS. Typically, IOPS equate to one second divided by the average SIG time for a bit, a small chunk of information, versus the average latency. And between those two, you find out your IOPS speed. Now, in terms of IOPS, uh, older 5400 rotations per minute hard drives, they have got an IOPS of around 40 IOPS. That goes up to 80 IOPS and a 720, uh, a 7200 RPM drive. Some of the more you know, enterprise level SAS level drives at 10,000 RPM, some of those old Barracuda type, um, Velociraptor type drives, that was 120 IOPS, which gave way to 180 when you saw the smaller form factor SAS 1500 RPM drives, and they were 180 IOPS. But after that, when things moved to hard drive, uh, from hard drives to SSD, things changed. Early hard drives um, did, you know, break into that fifth, you know, that 20 and 30,000 IOPS barrier. But the most significant milestones uh, were around about the, uh, you know, the release of the early Samsung SSDs, the Pro and the Evo 840 and 850 series, where we saw IOPS of 90,000 to 120,000 individual IOPS. Think of that. The earliest hard drives, some of those 5400 that we talked about, 80. And now we're talking about 80,000 which gives way, of course, to the most modern media at the moment, NVMe-based SSDs. Of course, there are other ones, but these aren't really that commercial. NVMe has broken into the commercial sector, and some of those have got IOPS well in excess of 380,000 to 440,000 IOPS. So input outputs per second, or effectively, the number of individual operations. Those are the four main measurements of data storage of NAS, DAS, and more. And they're the four benchmarks that you should be looking for when buying any data storage device. And once again, you want your data transfer to be as high as possible. You want your bandwidth to be as high as possible, but you want your latency as low as possible. And right again, you want your IOPS right up there in the hundreds and thousands. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you. There is a NAS Compare article about this below. Do check it out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this video. I found it helpful. And do remember to visit NAS Compares. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.